Come on Tottenham, stick it in the goal Come on Tottenham, the pace so bloody slow You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen Put on that lily white and run on to that green White Hart Lane has seen its pain, it's had its load of nights We've fought our team through thick and thin and all those glory nights And when the game is done we'll sing a song and talk it out all night Hey! Come on Tottenham, stick it in the goal Come on Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow, you are the first team It's episode 33, season 6 of the Tottenham Family Podcast, my name's Jav Joining me this week, Bex from Portsmouth Hello And David from Sussex Good evening Right. So, since we recorded the last pod, what would have been what, just over a week ago, um, we had the news, I think it was last Friday, possibly, um, that Jenna Scalacci, captain of the Tottenham women's team, um, announced her retirement from football. Um, yeah, but I suppose that's to be apt to turn to you Bex first um, given all that you've done for the podcast in terms of covering Spurs ladies um, you and I met her about four years ago um, thoughts on Jenna Sklarchi and her career at Spurs I think she's been outstanding I think she's um, she's been there 11 years I think she has been fantastic for the club and for women's football as a whole um, great captain she's been a captain for years um, and whilst it's not a surprise that she's retired, she is 36. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm impressed that it's taken her this long to decide that okay, enough is enough. But she has been magnificent, I think, as a, as a skipper. She's everything that you want. She's polite. She was fantastic when we spoke to her. Um, she is really good on the pitch. She's worked with a lot of players because women's football they tend to change players much more frequently than like the men's senior team do. Um, and to be able to still get on with all those players and get their promotion and get them, get them winning stuff and still stay in that role, I think is really important. This is a lot about her as a character mm. and as a player. Um, she, I think mean, she's been with the club. I think mean, she, she she joined as a sixteen year old. Um, she did. Then went on to um, college, I think, and then and then came back and played for QPR. Enfield Town. She's she's from Enfield, and then back to Spurs in two thousand and nine. And 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 the remarkable thing about Jenna Scalacci is one of the many remarkable things about her was when we interviewed her in must have been what twenty sixteen for yeah just over four years ago. Um, that interview, by the way, is still available um, if you haven't heard it, um, and if you have, listen to it again. <laughs> I, I did earlier today. Shameless plugging here. Um, season two of the podcast. I think it's ever. It's- it's your podcast. You can. You're perfectly welcome to plug away. But that was a really good trip. So it was. we went up and interviewed um, Jenna Scalacci and Anna. Uh, oh gosh, I can't even remember the name. Avia uh, Bergen. Avia Bergen. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and it began with an A. And they were obviously a little bit nervous. I think they weren't very used to being interviewed mm. at the time. So that was pre the WSL, pre their promotion to WSL. Um, they clearly weren't, it wasn't a common thing for them to be interviewed. We managed to snatch half an hour with them before they went Wednesday night training. So it was a late night for us as well. Um, and they really did seem quite uncertain. So I think the fact that she's stayed there and she will obviously have given interviews since then um, with maybe a little bit more aplomb. And certainly the, there's a video on the Spurs Women site at the moment. And although it's a Skype interview, I guess, by the club, it doesn't have their usual polishness. Um, because of the way it's been done but she seems a lot more confident now which I think is nice and that obviously shows how much she's grown since that time that we spoke to her but yeah she's been there a long time she was the video um, is a really good interview about why she's decided to retire um, and about her time at Spurs definitely well worth a watch the the, the the interesting about that point when when we when we when we went down to Hotspur Way um, was that Spurs ladies as, as they were referred to then at the time Tottenham women now um they were in I suppose it would be what the f- third division effectively it was yeah, the southern, kind of, southern tier yeah, um, and and she's been with the club for so long that she's been through s- several pr- um pr- 
promotions all the way into 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 WSL. And what normally happens when a team at any level, whether it's men's or women's football, um, when you go up, um, uh, when you get promoted, if you go all, all all the way, and and that's you know something that seldom happens. But the players often aren't the same change. ones. They do, yeah. but they're not. They're not off that level, but she yeah. she was all the way there, right through to the very end. And, I, and although her her, her um, appearances last year were somewhat less than probably she hoped, she still remains the club captain. Yeah, um, she's still very much a part of that whole team. Yeah, uh, Karen Hills, the manager, certainly seemed to um, want to play her. Uh, but I guess you know, and it happens to us all. Mm-hmm. And the three of us will know this age does eventually catch up with you and you can't do that forever um but i think she has been fantastic and uh, i'm sorry to see her go exciting times for the club because if you have somebody as captain for that length of time a change is always going to be challenging for them yeah. let alone in the situation that we're in now so it will be really interesting to see how karen approaches that um whether they have a couple of captains or whether she decides on a senior player to pick it up mm-hmm. it will be um it be really really good really yeah. excited to watch the team change again absolutely and I, the, the, I think there must have been a couple of months after that 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 interview I mean we we went I think it was February of 2016 and it was they just got to the, the, the Tottenham women had just got to the Ryman's Cup final um, which was two months later it was April and you and I went to that um, mm-hmm. Spurs one picked up a trophy on the penalties. only on penalties it was, and, yes it was um that was really stressful. <laughs> That's the only time in my lifetime as a Spurs fan that I've I've gone and seen them win a <laughs> pick up a trophy. In fact, that's not true. I went to so um, a year later. I was at White Hart Lane. I think it was April of 2017 yeah. where they won the league. They won the league. Jenna Sklachi lifted the league 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 um, trophy. And when she went to lift up the trophy, um, so all the players, all, all the other. Um, members of the squads they, they collected their medals and then she was the last one and she went and got a medal and just as she was about to lift 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 the lift the trophy all of her teammates started a chant of oh Jan Eskilachi that sort of <laughs> Moussa Dembele and, yeah. and, it, and it, was, it just just shows how highly um her teammates um held held her up and and, and you know, looks up to her um, yeah, and she's a fan of the club as well. You know, she's a long-time Spurs fan anyway. So I think for lots of us, when, you know, in the, the Walter Mitty days in your youth, you would have dreamed of becoming the Spurs captain, men or women. Still do. Yeah, exactly. I, I, if I say you're past that stage, Jab, is that going to upset you? <laughs> no. Your feelings? No. Um, but who wouldn't want to be in that position? And even though she started off as an amateur and only signed her first professional contract last year when they went to WSL1 because of the way the FA restructured the Women's League I can't think of anything any more of an accolade for any fan than to captain your team at any level um, let alone winning trophies and you know they played at White Hart Lane they had a couple of games at White Hart Lane she took the team out when they their promoted game to when they went to Chelsea 25,000 people saw her lead the team out onto the pitch that's an amazing level. That's amazing numbers for women's football in this country for just an, a standard WSL league match. So I can't imagine how proud she must have been at that moment. That is astonishing. There was a, there's a quote I'm going to read out from no less than Daniel Levy. Um, uh, this was, I think, last week. And he, uh, yeah, and he, he just said, and I quote, Jenna has made an incredible contribution as a player and captain, playing a significant role in the progress and evolution of, of Spurs women to get to where we are today, competing at the top level of the, women, of the women's game. She's represented the club with diligence and distinction for more than a decade, not only on the field, but also outside of the match day environment where she where she has frequently in, involved herself in the club's work in the local community and the Tottenham Hotspur Foundation. It was, it was commonplace that, that, uh, at, at Christmas, for example, you would see her out with, say, yeah. Hugo or other, other Spurs other players. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that, that's you know, no less than, than Dan Levy speaking out about um, for uh, Jenner is, is, is amazing it, 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 it speaks volumes of, of her and her contribution at the club yeah um, and I think he absolutely should have done that it would have been 
noticeable had he not said mm-hmm. anything. Um, so I wish her all the best. I think that's fantastic. I did see somebody saying perhaps she should become the first women's ambassador in the same way mm. players like Mabba, etc. Yeah. And, you know, the older players are. Lovely. And I think yeah. that would be, oh, yeah, exactly. That would be a really good idea. It would be amazing. And it would put Spurs, I think, I don't know many other, oh, although to be fair, I don't follow the ambassadors for any other Premier League mm. men's team. Um, but I think that would be really important for Tottenham to show that they've got a commitment to the women's team. Were they to do that? Um, we shall see. Yeah. But yeah. I think it would be a good thing. Agree. No, on, on behalf of everybody um, associated with the Tottenham Family Podcast, we wish you all the best. Um, well, firstly, uh, good luck with her retirement and, and wish her all the best, whatever she d- decides to do. Um, Exciting times. Yep, yep. Um, right. Uh, <laughs> let's. Um, we've got a lot of questions, right? We've got a <laughs> shitload of questions. So, the best way that we're going to do this is we're just going to just go straight in and get through everybody's questions we, we we'll try to do um do it justice um but there's a lot to get through so we're going to just get through it as quickly as possible it's a friday evening we've all got things to do um yeah it's even though it's locked down but you know we, we've all got places that we need to need to be I, i'm i'm as soon as the show's finished i'm going to drive down to to portsmouth and meet up with bex and we're going to tear down some 5g masks <laughs> do our bit for anglo 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 chinese relations oh okay <laughs> I didn't realise that was tonight. All right, yeah, yeah. no worries. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's 5G mask and anything that looks like a 5G mask. Everybody knows coronavirus comes from 5G mask. Right. Um, Bex, what was your highlight of, of yesterday, by the way? Oh, Christ. Um, yeah, there was no highlight whatsoever, apart from, like I said on Twitter, the final whistle, because yeah. it was depressing it was really really depressing in fact no that's a lie the best thing about it was the fact that it was a six o'clock kickoff so i had time after the game finished to go do you know what and had i been inclined i would have got myself a glass of something as the only way to cope for it before i went to bed Mm -hmm. um, rather than an eight o'clock kickoff where you just go to bed full of rage but it was just not great yeah yeah it was was depressing right so we had a question from nate um uh, Twitter handles at mate underscore ha. To me, it seems everything turned on that ridiculous VAR decision. To be clear, I'm not using this as an excuse. Just stating that once that decision went against against us, it seemed like we were never going to win. What's wrong with our mentality? Can it be fixed? I'm going to give your dulcet tones a rest for a minute, Bex. Thank you. Uh, David, I come to you. Uh, he's left the room apparently. I don't know where he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I chat. It's fine. You can just say it. <laughs> right. Well, I don't know if you want to discuss the VR, VAR moment or not. Uh, yes. Yeah. Juncture. Go for um, it. I, I agree with the question. Um, did it? It's not an excuse, but I think it did turn on that. I think our mentality did turn on that moment. Uh, I think it's one of the most shocking things I've seen in football. Um, I really do. It, it's, there is no joined up thinking with VAR. They seem to be separate entities. The referee, the linesman, they all, I know they it mic'd up, but it just looks separated. And the process yesterday for that looked broken. It really did. And this idea that, um, well, it's handball, that's it, that's law. So we have to accept that. Well, do we have to accept it? Why do we have to keep accepting something that's upsetting all fans? It's not about Spurs. This is about football and, and what the fan wants from it. And if it's sitting... I'm, I'm seeing on social media fans from other clubs disgusted with it. They're absolutely disgusted. And, and all the way up because we've had a couple of other decisions. One hairline on the uh, West Ham-Chelsea game, which fortunately for West Ham didn't impact on the result in the end. Um, and another one with the Man City game, but it, it's just, it's shocking the way it's it's now turning out. And uh, all other times before VAR, it, who would have looked to that as a handball? It would never have been. Uh, I, and I think it did turn on it. Um, mm. I really do. But that doesn't excuse how we performed after that. That is down to the players. Um, if it, it happens, you know, something happens, it upsets you. 
it could have been a chap with a you know one of the lads with a broken leg but you've sure. got to get on with it sure but it but it certainly events sometimes they go against you they can they can change the course of a game a d- decision that goes for or against you um but it seems to be happening too often for us and uh, i'll give you a few examples brighton earlier this season we um conceded a goal very early on um hugo um stumbling and, and then and, and dislocating his, his shoulder um it was said that the impact of of that injury um affected the players the the Sissoko handball in the Champions League final. Of course, it changed the course of the game, and and Liverpool were able to sit back and, and defend. But we had, you know, on, on that particular day, we had what eighty nine minutes or, or so to to get back in the game. And it does beg the question, you know, is there a mentality issue at Spurs? It's hard well, to say. It's hard to that. I think at the moment is indefensible. I don't think you can argue that there isn't because last night yeah that decision did change everything and it did for the Champions League game as well mm. oh it did for that That's yeah a, it, it's finished the game there and then yeah absolutely and, uh, and, and afterwards, UEFA said, well, I don't think that's right, that handball. It shouldn't be like that. It's no point saying afterwards. No. These guys are very highly paid. And if they're not able to set up a proper system of laws, um, then, then they should get out and let somebody else do it. But uh, also, just... they're, being, they're being absolutely led by that very strict letter of the law. So, yes, last night... In line with the strict letter of the law, yes, it was a handball. However, if you look at the situation holistically, how could that situation have been avoided? Was it deliberate? Was it malicious? Was it something he did knowingly? No. So why then are they being so hard over about that rule? Is it because they aren't comfortable making decisions without that backup any longer? Or is it because UEFA have said, Right, but that's it. You need to obey the letter of the law. And that's okay. If they're going to do that, they need to be consistent with it, which is something we've long complained about. We thought, I thought, VAR might iron out is the lack of consistency. But apparently that's not the case. But there was no common dog, no common sense applied to that incident last night. No, no. Um, I I have to say, I'm not actually, I've watched it so many times, I can't see the handball. And I think it came off the top of the shoulder. Um, But the thing is, he was hit by one, Mora was, hit by the second, and then as he hit the deck, trying to avoid everything, he knew what was coming. Uh, the player that, that whacked it, um, absolutely, he got his teeth gritted and he belted the ball at Mora, just knowing what that he could hurt him with it. I mean, that's three goes at him. Um, rightfully so, the referees play on. It's fallen to Kane. Referee was happy as Larry until VAR stepped in and said, you know what, that is a handball. Nothing I can do about it, that's it. But, and that's my point, is there's no common sense applied along with no. that rule. They're not looking no. at the whole situation. They're looking at just that one individual, not what caused him to fall over, not what caused the handball, just the fact that, yes, he did handball. I get that, I've got no beef with that, but it's how that, that law was applied. And that's, for me, that's mm. what's wrong, is there is no common sense. The Sonny being, what, half a an atom off you know offside with like the outside edge of his boot which caused the goal to be disallowed previously i mean come on guys seriously i know there has to, you have to draw a line somewhere but how fine well, the, is that line Apparently the law's it's really fucking fine yeah the laws there's a number of the these laws um uh, guidelines of the game that have got to change and they really have yeah. it's because the fans don't like it they really don't and the way var is working and it's not it's, VAR is only um, a, re- only be a, re- a, a guidance. Re- yes, a recording. That's all it is. They're just looking at it again. So it's not exactly V. It's not as though oh, we've it's got not a like blur. tennis. Well, where they've got a definitive or cricket where they've got some, you know, advanced techniques to make to judge this. Yeah. Because football is a much more fluid game. Yeah, yeah. This is the problem with it. We don't we don't hear really any controversy in tennis or, or cricket and uh, interesting with tennis as I said before you know you only get um, two goes at it and if you fail on oh, this cricket it's cricket you have two goes at it <laughs> sorry cricket cricket you have two appeals and, and 
if you lose both of those, that's it. You haven't got yeah. another one. And that, that's an interesting aspect. But, um, but yeah. the, the rule break. But I, I'm not convinced he handballed it. And what makes it even more embarrassing is um, the lad uh, elbowing um, Sonny. Sonny, mm. yeah. yeah. That was Norwood. On a and yellow he, already. Yeah. yeah. And you could see his eyes. He looked at him and he could see where he was. And he put the elbow into Sonny. That was a straight red card. Why wasn't VAR looking at that? And why haven't they since today retrospectively uh, charged him? I, I, I can't understand. That That was a nasty elbow. Oh, far. Um, and it's impl- impl- implementation it is a complete shambles Some, you know, my thoughts on VAR are clear but it's not going to go away so I, I accept it but it's it just it needs to be better impl- implemented it's, it's, it's just it's shambolic um, I'm, I'm not going to really personally add a I've not really got anything more to say on the incident other than no. to add what, what, you, what you've both said I, I just feel that that happened in the first half, so we go in at half time, dust yourselves down, restart second half, and I felt we were a bit toothless to be honest. And I and, and, and I just again feel that you know where is our if it was a if it was a one off that's fine, but it, there's just been too many times over the course of the season where I just think that mentally something's not right with the players. Um, it, it, I don't know whether it's whether it's confidence, whether it's whether it's the, the fact that we lost the Champions, Champions League final, that's, that's, a, that's a bit of a body blow. I don't know. Um, the, the questions, by the way, I don't think any of them, there are any positive questions. Um, <laughs> it, it, it is people have feel what they feel, and, and a lot of these questions came in at the time last night, straight after the match, um, where emotions were raw. Um, but uh, we'll, 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 you know, we've, we've obviously had some time to dissects the the, the, the results um, 24 hours on John Steggles he just says forget about VAR disallowed goal and the sending off that wasn't given that performance was unacceptable on unacceptable on every level will we finish in the top half of the table I doubt it at this moment wow I, really I, I, yep at this moment I, I have the doubts and I don't disagree with John um, I, I think yesterday's um, events will mentally uh, scar us a little bit. We'll see. Everton is a is a, a excellent game, uh, in my opinion, for us to come along and see whether we've got what it takes or not. This see a mental attitude, and the Everton game will tell us. But if if, it, if we don't show it then, um, and and we end up because Everton are finding form, so they're not going to be an easy touch by any means. So if we if we fail there, I got this feeling we're going to tumble okay interesting Bex slightly more optimistic Mm. well I'd be disappointed if we finish in the second the bottom half of the table yeah Um, although I'm kind of wishful thinking that were that to happen Levy might go oi Mourinho bag packed go bye Um, although that's a lot of money that he's going to waste and we all know he doesn't like doing that so yeah. I don't know we should finish in the top half of the table I'm dis- I'm re- what's disappointed me about last night is because we we should have gone over Arsenal and that didn't happen and I think that made yeah. it a little bit worse for me I was really hoping I was thinking oh, we should win this yeah. you know and I wasn't hoping for a great scoreline but I didn't think we'd lose quite that badly and play so badly so it's really hard to gauge and I guess this is the biggest test of Mourinho's career thus far isn't it to see if he can pick us up from a defeat like that against a team like that for the Everton game see Everton are one point behind us if they beat us they're yeah. two points ahead we start to tumble almost into the second half of the table depending what Burnley do so um, John's uh, comment is, is not ridiculous by any means it's, yeah. um, it, it's well worth a consideration I mean, we've even got I mean, Newcastle in 13. If they're three points behind us, we've still got to play them. And they seem yeah. to be hit, 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 um, hitting form post-lockdown. Yeah. Um, Surely we'd never lose to Newcastle. <sighs> oh, yeah. really? <laughs> yeah, because we've got no form for that, have we, at the back end no. of the season? <laughs> so the, the optimist in me says that our form will be patchy. Um, the next time it was it six six games left. I think we'll, we'll, we'll win a few and play well, and we'll, we'll probably drop a few points here and there. But, I, but at the same time, I think that some of those teams around us, their form will also be patchy, and that will probably mean that we might finish 
possibly above because we always got to play Arsenal as well. Might finish above them and, and might finish best case scenario eighth, which may or may not be enough for a U- U- Europa um, position. But then, yeah, if somebody, if one team, dare I say it too, like, you know, like I said, just Newcastle or Everton, if they put a run of um, games together, then suddenly we're looking at ninth, tenth, maybe lower. Um, hmm. yes, yesterday we were looking above us, today we're looking below us. Yeah. Well, and actually, I guess the benefit with that would be no European football next year. There are benefits, yeah, yeah, f- from a. F- from a financial point of view, less so. It wouldn't be beneficial in terms of trying to keep some of those players, but in terms of less matches, we saw with Chelsea and Leicester a few seasons ago, they weren't involved in Europe, um, Europe and I think both seasons they won the league. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah, when Mourinho took over, were, were we, what, 14th or something? In the table? Ooh, ooh. We were quite I th- low. I think, I think we were something like that. Um, and we're not too far off 14th. We're only five points off Southampton. Yeah. Um, having said that, you know, we, we've you know, I look at the teams below us. We do have a positive goal difference of plus seven. They've all got minus sevens, minus nines, minus tens. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, Kent Goodrich, Twitter handle is at Kent Goodrich. Would what would be better use of your time over the summer than watching this pile? Um, I'm thinking of making a suit of Mandalorian armor. Um, okay, and then a question from Gilly. Um, Twitter handle as I know Alan Corsine. The defenders didn't cover themselves in glory, but it's so easy to get onto them. If we only sign one player uh, for next season, uh, it goes on to say a DM is a must. We look very unbalanced with or without the ball. Um, we need a proper DM. A Sissoko is often drawn out of midfield to cover at right back, leaving one central mid- midfielder in there. Yesterday it was Lacelso. Um Still, condition, touch, awareness, etc. St- still seem a bit pre-season out there. So maybe we'll be ready to go sometime after next Christmas. And then he just goes on to say, please talk about more about um, Jenna Scalacci than the men's <laughs> team. I mean, I, I hope we, we did that justice at the start of the pod, and he just goes on to say, uh, thanks and all the best in retirement, Skipper. Um, I, I mean, Gilly paints a slightly more optimistic picture in that, you know, maybe if we just get a DM, that'll, that'll give us a bit of steel. Um, is it as simple as that? No, it's not the no. as simple as that. No. Um, I watched very, I say, watched very carefully today, and I, overall, I, I, you've got to pay some credit to Sheffield United. They came out with a game plan. They were very solid, very organised. They left us no space. We went there with, well, they were saying six, <coughs> five or six forwards. We got pace. We put Ali on the bench and brought Bergvine. We got pace. What did Sheffield United do? Well, they, they covered all the areas, so there wasn't any space for them to run into. They, they they had to run. If they ran, they just ran into defenders. So they did that very well. What the game really spelt out after the first 10 minutes was that it was a game that we were going to win 1-0 at best, either 0-0 or 1-0, based on the last two games and our well-organised defence. What happened yesterday was defence forgot what they were doing. And I've never seen such a shambolic... I mean, it didn't happen every time they came forward, by any means. But certainly... But most. The, well, no, not really. It, it, actually, Lloris didn't have that much to do. He had more to no, do than Henderson. No, he didn't. He did have things to do, and none of it happened. <laughs> Sorry, I am very cynical about it. I, it was just, I'm really disappointed. Can well, you tell? I, yeah. Sorry, I, Dave. I, I, that's all right. I understand that. And... Everybody's got their frustration. They've got to let it, you know, release it their, their own way. But I watched it, and um, again today, as I say, and I, I carefully watched the first goal. I, I just shudder, um, really, at that one. And Celso, actually, I thought was more to blame. But Soonis had it spot on when he said they're all ball watching. And I put it on sort of slow motion, and all their heads were just one way at that ball. They never tracked any of the players coming in on the edge of the box. It was quite shocking. And it was Sunday football. That was absolutely Sunday football. Um, so I, I've got no excuse. I'm not sure it's as simple as a, a 
a central midfielder. It's got to be, as we've gone back to that first question, a mentality. Why did they switch off yesterday, the defenders? Why can't they tell each other picking up? I know things are happening fast and it's not always easy to do so. But if you're if you're working on the training pitch day in, day out, and surely Mourinho and his um, a past record of solid defences is working on this. It certainly didn't work yesterday and you've got to shine the light, get on Mourinho and saying, well, you know, you might be pointing at the players, but really the buck stops you, mate, and you're going to have to sort this. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you know what the most disappointing aspect of yesterday was? Um, the fact that we had pretty much a full-strength team out there, yeah. full-strength squad. The only players that were missing were one five who probably wouldn't have got anywhere near the first team. Jaffa Taganga, who was sort of in and out, but, you know, he's, he's, he's a young young lad. Um, and again, with everybody fit, although he, he, he you know he, he played well earlier earlier this season when he got a few chances, but with everybody fit probably it's fair to say to, to Ganga wouldn't have got in the starting team. So we had we had Kane, we had Son, we had Soko, we had all of these players at his disposal. We had um however many days from the last game to prepare for this match. And really Mourinho hasn't got any excuses. He can't blame I mean he, no, no doubt he'll go on about the VAR and said that's fine. You can you can do that up to a point. But he's got all his players at his at his disposal. He's had time to, to um, work with them he can't use that as an excuse anymore it's ju- it was just poor really, it really really really, really was poor um, but it's been like that all season that we oh, yeah. have all struggled, we have struggled to explain since the Villa game yeah. that first, se- first game what the fuck is going on, where was that team what has happened to that team, in fact it goes back probably oh. to the back end of last season, doesn't it, really? Uh, and, and earlier than that, actually. Yeah. So, it, it, there is something intrinsically wrong. We've changed the manager. There's no change. And because the manager has changed, the formation has changed. And that hasn't made a difference. So, it can only be the players. Yeah. Mm. And you've got a question. All right, lads, come on. You're not children. What the hell do you think you're playing at? Because your job is to go out there and perform and you're clearly not performing to the standard that we expect from you. So sort it out amongst yourselves, but you need to be playing coherently as a team. And that is sadly missing at the moment. And I don't know how you get that back. Jose's teams are built on strong defensive units and we're not that, you know, that, that they were not showing that. I mean, we sort of, again... Perhaps for after the, the first two matches after the reset, where we looked, we, we, the, the chat on the pot, put on the last couple of pods was we, we looked a bit more solid. Okay, we conceded one goal against United, but you know that was a penalty that maybe shouldn't have been given and a clean sheet against West Ham. But let's be fair, it is West Ham who were pretty poor. Um, and actually, we look at it yesterday, and we're not that good. And as you know, is. Dyer's come in. He's 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 done a okay job in in some of the previous games. When you when you look at that squad, when you look at the starting eleven and compare it to compare it to us at our peak a few seasons ago, you compare out of Errol and Vertonghen that pairing quality defenders, top defenders, world class defenders who've obviously have benefited from playing with one another at Ajax and, and with the with the Belgium national team. And you compare that to and I'm not I don't mean to be disrespectful, but when you compare that to Sanchez, the younger player, and compare that to Eric Dyer, it's a world of difference between what we had a few seasons ago and what we've got now. Um and I I, David, you might have said that earlier that the problem started maybe even before last season, and I, and I would go as far back as the summer of 2017 when we finished second in the league to Chelsea and we sold Carl Walker that summer. And I don't think we've ever addressed, for example, the right back um, slot since then. I think we've made a complete hash of that. I think that we, from, and that, that I would say that from that point we made a complete hash of that. We made a complete hash of 
not replacing Wanyama when he had a good season then, but then he got injured and and never was the same player. I think I think other clubs would have would have put sentiment to one side and would have but well, they've they've got money and they'll, they'll just dip into the transfer window just like that. I suppose that's the difference. We didn't get another defensive midf- central defensive midfield player. Dembele. A lot of people go on about the fact that we sold him last season. Um, stupidly yeah maybe but he was he was on the decline anyway long long before that and we should have got a replacement for Dembele whilst he was still at the club say back in again 2017 and we can point we can if if if, if we're looking to if we're going to blame allocation we can point the finger at Poch we could point the finger at Levy we could point the finger at um scouting at the club I, I, I'll just do it in a without blaming one single person I'll just blame the club and the club, it's a failure of the club over that period of time not to improve the quality of the squad. And that, and famously, that season was it last season when two trans, two successive transfer windows, we didn't bring anybody in. So what we had, we had the situation where effectively Pochettino was just performing miracles and draining every last drop out of the players he 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 he, he had at his disposal. Um, it was just about enough to get us to a Champions League final, but. We, we've been a. Maybe we're we're only seeing it now. Maybe it's much more apparent now than at the time. But we we're a team and squad in decline. It's really sad. There's Again. no doubt. There's no doubt it's declined. No doubt it's declined. You can't argue that point. Um, even when we got Stephen Bergwijn, um, we're told that he was actually only the second choice, which I I think is very poor for that sort of thing to come out. Yeah. How, does it make, how does it make the bloke feel? I was only second choice. It was a first choice. You know, it's another Dutch winger, mate. Hertz van Rental. Should have got him. <laughs> so you know, the question is then, how do they make it better? Well, huh, how do you make it better? Well, Because uh, I can easily see some players leaving this summer or when their contracts are up. Okay, if, you, if you were Kane, would you want to stay? Um... Yeah. Probably not. Other, other than well, break a few records. But if you want to win stuff, if you want to win trophies, you've got to look at it realistically. And I don't think we're, we're well placed um, now to to do that at this point in time. The only thing, if I was Harry Kane, is if he if he sought a move now, um, a year before the Euros, would that be a bit risky? If he if he moved to another club in the Premier League, possibly not. If he moved abroad. Possibly it could it could it could be a big I risk. I think he's going to give up the potential to look back on his career with medals in exchange for another England mm. um, no show. Mm. I mean, it's for Kane. I feel it's either this summer or or next summer. Um, I think about I, I, yeah. Um, I I don't I, I wouldn't blame him if 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 he if he decided to leave. I, I said it on a few pods back. Um, I think there are four outfield players that I'd keep at Spurs, and they they are for me the Kane, Son, Delhi. Despite the fact that some people have questioned um, mm. his form. And and Lo Celso, who didn't have a great game yesterday, um, you can make a case for selling these players based on um, getting money for them, certainly. But in terms of footballing ability, um, I would keep them. The rest of the squad, and don't get me wrong, there are, you know there are, there are some decent players there, or some hardworking players, shall we say? But you could make a case for selling pretty much everybody else in terms of outfield players. How practical that? that is to do it's well it's not you're not you're not going to do that in one single window you're going to have to do that over a course of a few windows and then make sure the money's reinvested in the squad but um you know you can make for example you could make a case for selling uh, Musa Sissoko on the basis that he's 30 plus um he's got a few years left on his contract he signed a new contract last year um you could get some money for him even Dombele you could say well if that's not going to work if that signing isn't um, somebody that's um, I'm not going to be pulling any trees from Mourinho, or Mourinho doesn't li- doesn't like him. Then sell him this summer and re- reinvest the money um, in, in other players. So there is a question. I got head slightly ahead of myself. There is a question further down in the running order on that. Um, 
Let's turn it back to Jose because we've got three questions on on this so or comments. Firstly, Darren Pamenter, uh, he says, and there was me thinking Jose had started to turn us into a decent defensive u- unit. Dominic Sibley, his Twitter handle is at Dom Sib. He says, Jose in, Jose out, shake it all about, Levy in, Levy out, um, man face palming. Sorry, uh, where, where the fuck do we go from here? A young pro- progressive manager for me. And then Matthew Moroney, it's Twitter analyst Matthew Moroney 6, why did Spurs sell their soul to the devil? They have no money to spend, so why Jose? Yeah, I think that's the last part of that, is the interesting question. Um, I guess Jose came in because he was offered £15 million or so pounds a year. Um, yeah, but why been... did why did Levy still want him? I know they tried to get him before. Yeah, but Levy, Levy loves, Levy loves but... to have... He always wanted him, apparently. I mean, I, I'm not yeah. privy to it. I didn't see it in his office, but apparently he did. Um, and it was one opportunity, and he clearly tapped him up because Josie was talking yeah. only the weeks before about, I'm coming back to the Premier League. Um, we're all scratching our heads thinking, well, where's he coming back then? Um, why would he take a job that clearly is going to be more challenging than probably any other that he's taken? I, I can't think. Porto... Well, that's a, a no-brainer. I mean, it's his first proper job. He's, he's um, done well. He was always going to work on a budget there. He quite, quite liked the squads. But after that, he'd got money to spend. And, and there were never any issues. He's come to Spurs. He clearly knew that he wasn't going to have um, a whole war chest to spend on this. So he's got to rely on his own coaching abilities and maybe to um, grab a few sort of more bargain basement players and make something of them he's gone for it or it's just a 15 million is it is it the stat is he just gone and said you know what 15 million i'm not saying no to that then he could sack me i don't care well maybe it's just maybe it's maybe it's it's, it's a stopgap for him um you know he, he was out of work the, the, the united experience didn't didn't go particularly well he's obviously got a house in london so he doesn't have to worry about re- relocating um takes on spurs for a little bit does a okay job but this um, isn't going to add anything to his CV at the moment. No, but it, but it's it, like let's say well, I don't know. Well, let's say to improve quite a lot for it to add anything to his CV. Sure, but let's say he actually aspires to manage. I don't know. I'm just plucking a name out. It, go back to Inter Milan or, or, or Real Madrid or the Portuguese national job. But none of those big jobs are available at the moment. This is just something that that passes passes time. Or or are or are we? Or, or is he a stopgap for us? Um, I'm being slightly mischievous here, but could you imagine that uh, Pochettino tells <laughs> Daniel back in October, November, do you know what, Daniel, I, I need a sabbatical from the game. Maurizio, you can go ahead, ha- ha- um, ahead and do that. Um, get rid of him, put somebody else in, you can come back next season or in fact whenever you want. Um, I mean, I'm being slightly mis- mischievous, I'm sure it's that, that's not the reason, but but you know, rather than go for I don't know, imagine imagine actually somebody like um, the, the the guy at Wolves or um, Nagels, whatever his name is, the, Na- the Nagelsman. Nagelsman, yeah. Imagine somebody like that is actually who um, Levy was after, but they're not available, so he gets a stopgap in, albeit yeah. a very expensive one. Yeah. It's, it's also possible that, I don't know, maybe Jose looked at it from the outside and thought, that's a good squad, Harry Kane, Deli Ali, Humming Son, and probably didn't realise the scale of the problem. Maybe he's having regrets now, I don't know. But it, yeah. but it's odd. It, 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 why would he take it, I don't know, I don't know. without money? I, hmm. We will never know, or we won't until his autobiography comes out in 10 years. And is he the right choice? It's, My it's feelings much, on it have always been clear, but... There's too much water under the bridge, isn't there, for him? Mm. You know, he was at Chelsea, not once, but twice, and then at United. Mm, I don't want him. He's got a history of spending big bucks. Um, I don't think he did himself or United any favours when he was there, certainly not loved by the United fans. So I don't understand, even in the pursuit of medals and trophies why Levy want it I, I just don't get it I don't see it given his past history mm. but I'm not Daniel Levy and likewise as David said I was not a flyer on the, on the wall in his office to say yeah this is the man that I want and this is why but it is a puzzle for me it's a massive like why why Mourinho 
why with his reputation why would you want him why would you think the fans would go do you know what he's all right we'll give him a go no he has my, to win big for the fans i think to accept him my theory was right at the beginning and, and still is now this is to do with the naming rights of the stadium and all other commercial deals that those guys will dig deeper in their pockets when Mourinho's at the helm and I think they, they, they think this their company's name is going to be far more embellished with Mourinho sitting there and I think that's that's my best guess at the moment mm. about money which I don't have a problem with yeah I guess it uh, is but um, that's that's my that's my take on it. We're still waiting on these naming rights. So, sure. But then, if you, if you if you accept that, if you accept the fact that it's perhaps not a marriage made in heaven, you know, he doesn't play necessarily the football that we want. That he's the anti Pochettino, but he can deliver. But he's all, but he's also you know this big name um, that sits well with things like naming rights, and he's also somebody that's a pragmatic coach that can get you wins and 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 grind out results and get you trophies. That's all well and good, even if even if the idea of uh, Mourinho isn't particularly palatable to me and uh, and others, but. We're not even doing that. We we look we don't look like a team that's going to win matches and win trophies. We look completely far removed from that. We look at defensive shambles. We look all over the place. So then you question again the appointment. It, it's I don't know. Um, go to the next, game go, snap. Yeah, go to the next question. Andy Highland, <laughs> certain players and chairman. I mean, the different slant from here from, from from Andy. Certain players and chairman need to go. New owner new team and then Mark Stoll looking at the players he says different manager same players same struggles um, he poses a question is it time to cut some big names um, Mark went on to say that for him Lucas Winks Lamella Toby Dombele and Deli Ali should go over the next course of two windows only it depends who you get in to replace them hmm. it depends on the money that's there it depends on the players that Mourinho wants to pull in Assuming Mourinho is still going to be there, I'd, I'd still fight this anti Levy thing. I, yeah. I'm getting more a uh, case of I think Levy's making is making some errors. We've got to go back to the fact that, in fairness, coronavirus has changed everything, absolutely everything, and I'm, I'm and I've got to be a bit careful at criticising on this one game. Um, I know we're going back to nearly two seasons and I accept that and I really do um, but let's see what we do against Everton um, it, but you know if he's worth his salt uh, Mourinho he should be able to claw this one back but I'm not I'm not having it that he's done so much for the club and he really has got the club at, at his heart because um, football today is about the money it is about running a sustainable club and as much as people want uh, every owner to throw money I do not want to send Levy packing because he's never going to go anyway and end up yeah. with a Russian oligarch who is yeah. now not allowed back in the country mm, I wonder why they won't give him a, 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 a bit of paper that says he can enter the country I do not want any sort of shake that comes from a country with dubious human rights records you know, if you, you compare that Levy is in, ain't a bad bloke compared to what could come in. Or you could have a Chinese owner who takes over at Wigan, who promises to get them out of the mire, and a month later puts them into uh, administration with all the rumours running around that. You know, it's all very well, but, you know, this, this idea that <laughs> Levy is, is the Antichrist is, is a bit silly. Um, let's, see, let's see where we go, but I, I don't subscribe to losing Enoch or Levy I still think no. they've done wonders no, no. so they've done wonders for the club I really I think, I think it's very easy to, to fall into the trap that a lot of people try to paint Enoch and Levy in particular as being the devil incarnate and, and, and I agree with pretty much everything you said in terms of all the good stuff that, that Levy's done for the club um, and the fact that actually a lot of alternatives out there um, aren't great um, uh, yeah but I think there are two fundamental things which 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 he is at fault. One has been his tendency to sack managers um, and 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 hire a whole load of managers um, in in the time that 
Agreed. he's been in charge. Uh, you've got to question that. Um, and I really thought he got it right with Pochettino in terms of his recruit, in terms of hiring him. But I'm yeah, questioning his decision to, to sack him in November. Um, and the other thing is spending. Um, and yes, you, you do have to balance the books. And I'm glad that we, we've got chairman who doesn't doesn't uh, piss away money and 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 is prudent. But I but I also feel there have been times in our history in our recent history for example 2015-16 that summer we needed another striker we didn't buy a striker that summer um it was it was amazing that that season the, the season we were chasing Leicester Kane was pretty much fit for that whole season I don't think he got any injuries that was before before his succession of ha- ankle injuries um but then obviously played a lot of games so that that would have he wouldn't have got any got any rest um but we should have we didn't buy a striker then we ended up getting Janssen the following su- summer okay that didn't work out but it was like a one year late we didn't get a defensive mid- midfielder that summer we ended up getting Win- Winyama the following summer what did we do we played Eric Dyer um Levy looked at that and thought oh well, that works that the Dyer works really really well that's it that saved me a, a, yeah, but a few, we don't few, know that. few quid here, here we and don't that. know we don't know that that's happened and Every uh, like Levy has certainly said before, getting players in isn't as easy as it seems. Yeah, you can't just go. You, you, I like you. You come and play for me. Look, here's the money I'm going to give you, and that's it. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't depend. Doesn't always work on what the player wants. And we had that last summer. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's very easy, I think, as fans to go. Well, why didn't you do this? But again, because of the way Spurs operate, and we've all said this before, and we know this, they don't splash their, um, they don't wash their dirty laundry in public. It's not all over the press. You don't find out stuff. The media keep things really locked down, or the the club do, so it doesn't reach the media, but you don't know what happened. And I'm not defending him. I agree something else should have happened, but you don't know what he did and where it fell down. So I think it's very hard to judge him, because we're never... True. He might not be... He might not be... You're absolutely right, but there is. I think there has been there has been a failure of recruitment over that time, and that that yeah, could point know, to. But you don't know if it was a question of the like the maybe the top two players for any position that were identified yeah. said I'm not coming or this doesn't work for me, and you don't know who at that stage said we've got no number three. Yeah. Or, or, it, 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 or if it, they had a number three, yeah. somebody then went, no, I'm not having that player here for whatever reason. So we don't. It's really hard to gauge. It's bloody frustrating. The yeah, fact well, that as fans, you can say, "Well, why haven't you?" And look at the, you know, look. And we were saying at the time, well, I wasn't, but lots of people were saying at the time, "Look at the the knock-on effects at this. How is this going to work going forward?" And it's really frustrating now to go see. Told you, you should have done something then, but you don't know what was done at the time. Mm. Yeah. If anything, or I mean, I, I could be completely wrong. Levy might have said, "No, piss off! I'm not giving you any more money. I'm not signing anybody." Yeah, he may well have done that, but we're never going to find that out. Sure, or, he's or never going to tell. No, but actually, or, or or it could have been a failure of some of the people that we we had employed. Um, yeah, that you know, on 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 the scouting staff. That who was the guy who's uh, Paul Mitchell, um, for example? It could, it could have been people like that. They, you know, they, that. that it might. I agree. It might not necessarily have been down to Levy that particular one. The, the manager thing. I do that. Buck stops with with, with 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 Levy there, and you've got a question having so many managers. Contrast that to the team across the road, um, and they've had well uh, since. Well, they had Wenger, and they've had two managers since. And I don't know how many we've had since Wenger. Um, I can. Yeah, quite a few. Jerry Francis, Christian Gross, George Graham, David Pleat, caretaker various times, um, Martin Yell, Jack Santini, uh, Redknapp. Redknapp. Who was the other guy that won a trophy before Redknapp? Ramos. Yeah. Uh, AVB. Yeah. Tim Sherwood, Pochettino, Marino. Quite a few. Um, and obviously, yeah, the, the, the other thing is we haven't won that many trophies in that period of time. But yeah. Um, well, I'll just address Mark's question about the player chucking the players out. That, that Dev, yeah, uh, it may take that. It may take, and I think a big name, one of those will go. I don't, but we can't just chuck them all out. And as just as uh, Bex has been saying, that getting players in is nowhere near as easy as we'd like it to be. It's just not. So, um, nice idea. Um, I think it will take a bit of. Um, 
chopping and changing but mm. uh, it's going to have to be very clever now because coronavirus has changed the value of the market and potentially um, it could be that Spurs will now look at the lower uh, leagues as well and trying to grab some bargains from down there I see a Birmingham City player is about to go to Borussia Dortmund um, on quite a good 21 million I can't remember the lad's name um, so how they've sort of they've obviously identified him as a, a prospect 21 million I think in, in today's market that's very that's good nothing. money yeah mm-hmm. one of the pl- players Mark mentioned was Deli Ali um, we had a question from Dan Pallanter do you think Ali will listen to the bitter old git soonest and ask to leave now, this was I don't know if either of you called it yesterday but on Sky soonest oh, before the match said something like oh well Dali Ali's not playing um, along, those, along those lines um, he's not going to be happy he'll, he'll probably seek a move elsewhere um, they won't, they fair, won't his... if anybody considers what Graham Sooner says and goes oh yeah that's a pretty good idea quite frankly they're welcome to leave <laughs> yes quite because I think that that denotes a certain mental imbalance right away because the geezer should be just disposed of someone get off my TV I don't like you you well, complain about everything he, his mentality soon is comes from the day we played Liverpool there was one substitute Liverpool won the league with 15 players that season all they used was 15 players so if one of them got dropped that was a shock and they didn't like it today oh crikey we've got nine substitutes it's a squad game and clearly yesterday it seemed that Mourinho for me it seemed clear we were going for pace and so that's why Delhi started on the bench so I think mm. it's a non-story and we've also got three matches in a few days, and, and I'm sure Delhi will start some of those games. So also not the first time, both under uh, Jose and previously under Pochettino, there have been games where he, he's, he's, he hasn't always started. Um, not many, but there have been a few. Um, yeah, just, just, I don't know, uh, not... You know, it's reading more than there is in a situation. Um, OK, final one, two questions for my merging to one are from Ed Battle. Again, about something we touched on earlier about selling a play or players and reinvesting it into the squad but before we come on to that we, we did talk about the Everton game um, so that's on Monday um, I mean I was going to say predictions but <laughs> well, how, how are we all feeling about this game are we nervous because uh, I am yeah I, I'm trying to use the right word nervous is not quite the word but I'm I I'm, I'm, I'm tread with care, trepidation um, as to what might turn up. Um, it could be either team could turn up. It could be the team that played against West Ham and comfortably um, waited its moment and got a goal and, and win it. Or it could have been yesterday's team and it doesn't turn up. And then we're going to end up with another podcast where we're answering questions of people who are very unhappy. Yeah. And, apprehensive is my word mm. that's a good word and precisely for that you don't know which one of the Jekyll and Hyde teams is going to turn up at the moment and I've got no faith because I've got no faith in Mourinho or the team it makes it really hard to watch yeah yeah that is my team of course I'm going to watch them at the same time it's a little bit I don't want to watch this because in case it's bad there uh, has to be a reaction yeah, that's my reaction. Um, but yeah, I'd like to see very much something from Mourinho and the team. And I don't know what the answer is, but we can't be doing that. We can't go, oh, well, somebody clearly doesn't like us and therefore we're going to not play properly. Like, lads, get out there. I expect you to work as hard as any normal person, you know, with a minor setback in their job role. You go, OK, but I've got no option. I need to do this. And they need to start playing properly. And... Um, displaying what they were because certainly for Ali and Kane if they are hoping to move they need to show that Ali more than Kane I would suggest at the moment mm. I think I said I was a bit worried um, actually I think I'm probably it's a really bad thing to say I think I'm at the point where I really don't care to be honest <laughs> and I think I think that I think Covid is an awful what's happened with covid is an awful thing but in terms of its impacts on football and spurs um with wider impacts on football um i i, I do I, i'm concerned about clubs lower down and and, and yeah whether some of them will survive yeah. but in terms of the impact of spurs on the one hand i think it's been great because it means i don't have to go and watch this shower of shite at all I don't have to pay to go and yeah. watch them I don't have to go up to Sheffield or wherever and and that's that's fantastic on the other hand I think that it, I just feel like it's the 
biggest punishment to Spurs as a club because this season has been truly, truly awful. And what we're now faced with, instead of the season being done and dusted in May, is just dragging out. Yeah. And and yesterday, it, yesterday was a remi- reminded me of well, so many other games this season. It reminded me of the Brighton game when when we were toothless away from home. I mean, it wasn't. I don't think yesterday was as bad as that, but. Uh, it, it just it's just so 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 awful um, right final question two questions maybe we can merge, merge them into one um, both of them from Ed Brad so his first one is are we now at the point where it doesn't matter who the manager is if the owners don't won't back the team fully we won't win anything and then he goes on to say with the we won't spend spend much vibe coming from the club could we see Dombele sold and the funds used to strengthen across the squad squad and follow up to that is who would we buy mm. um part one no i mean i i would fight this one I, the team started yesterday should have won and that's the question we've been asking through this podcast why didn't this team win so just the, the idea of throwing players out as our choice and getting other players in um is not necessarily a great idea if we still got the poor mentality or whatever problem is in embedded in the club there's no point in doing that I, we have to sort of, I, I my feeling gut feeling is we have to do it and, and turn this around broadly with the team we've got because if we can't do that if we're just throwing everything out every time for every five minutes like a managers isn't it you, you just end up well though we've lost six games chuck him out get the next manager in you know full well we're just the same and that's what's happened Pochettino it wasn't it wasn't going well after uh, during Pochettino's time towards the end it's now looking just the same we're all scratching our heads why do we bother to do that so I, I would fight I would fight ca- uh, um, hard over that one as, as that being the principle really I know we've got to freshen the squad up and they always have to do that because players are getting older etc but just the idea it's almost like a revenge on them and that and that can't work so what was the second part of the question second part was um uh, i think so, something that jo- yeah jo- something, something that jo- jose hinted at last week saying that there wouldn't be a great deal of money to spend and no. in light in light of that um could we see somebody like don Bele sold and then funds reinvested into not the squad a and, uh, not a chance not a chance there's no way levy would sell him because partly because what he's paid for him now and um, and partly because what his value would be um, since the coronavirus. There's no way, un- unless someone could come along with a sheet of paper and say, I could buy these three really great prospects on the money, there may be. But I would think the only teams that were hawking, ready to grab someone like Ndombele, are teams that are not going to pay very much for him. So there's no way he's going to go, in my opinion. Hmm. So, for me, thank you, until they sort out whatever the problems are with the squad the only way to improve that squad is to change everybody because whatever is left if you don't change everything then whatever is left will reinfect potentially whatever is there yeah so you either it's all or nothing because i don't think you're going to fix it with that squad of players at the moment it's not the right answer because i think longer term that will damage us and who really who wants to start with an entirely new squad? Because, like, everybody would go. Like, the kids would go, the under-21s. Because I think the problem at the moment is endemic within the club. And something big needs to change in order to change that mentality at the moment. As for selling in Dombele, not a snowballs. Because until Levy, that well-established advocate or manager of the market, until he sees how the market is going to behave, nobody's going anywhere. So yeah. it makes my first point null and void really because mm. no one's going anywhere until Levy thinks he's going to get the best he can for those players and at the moment like it, it's all very quiet nothing's going to change I think short term we've got some good youngsters don't forget with the, the uh, young centre forward um, whose name is Gatesby at the moment Parrots Parrot, thank you we've also got uh, Jack- this lad um, young Ar- Ar- Argentinian lad Mauricio yes. Pochettino yeah. Jack Clark <laughs> Who those not getting are still not getting a chance he's sitting on the bench at QPR yeah but Ryan but why yeah. would does Mourinho never play for kids well <laughs> no that's a lie he has traditionally not liked to play younger players 
No, Jack, it's a good idea to get Jack Clark to some game time. In yeah. The championship. I, I, I don't have a problem with that. But he's to, he's to come in. Um, and we've still got um, Ryan Sessegnon to come in. I mean, he's a good youngster. So this. Be Ryan Sessegnon that's not a left back, though. So, do you know what I mean? <laughs> really? He, yeah. Be, I think we'll get Max Aarons as well, I think, in the summer. Oh, it is the summer. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, on that cheery note, um, we'll, be, <laughs> we'll be recording the next podcast on Tuesday, probably a day after the, uh, the Everton match, when hopefully things will be a little bit more upbeat and then it'll be another false storm before the next match where we'll lose against Bournemouth and be humbled by the team <laughs> that are fighting relegation. Um, until then, thank you, Bex. Thank you. Thank you, David. Yeah, cheers, Joe. Thank you to our listeners. This has been the Tottenham Family Podcast. Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, the base are bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run on to that green. Why our lane has seen its pain, it's at its low tonight. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those glory nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Pull on that lily white and run on to that green. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out over her.